Hello, dear folks. Welcome back to the East West Show, exclusively sponsored by Paul Batelli. The men's suit uh, represents class, tradition, culture, lifestyle, everything, and is the internationally renowned name Paul Batelli. Thank you, Paul. Paul, for sponsoring. Back to the show today with me, a political commentator, Mr. Drexel Smith of uh, Drexel Consulting Group. Oh, that's a wonderful group. Only your email is too long, though. Smith, <laughs> Smith <laughs> at a Smith um, <laughs> Consulting Group, group. dot com. Yeah. One more time. You may, we may consider shortening it. We just want you to practice your English writing. I see, I see, and the spelling too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. But what I've learned on the mm -hmm. show today, Jack, mm -hmm. uh, I feel very inadequate mm -hmm. because I do not have one of Paul's suits on. So yeah. maybe by the next show, mm -hmm. uh, I can get introduced to uh, What you can do, suit. though, is that you... Uh, do, well, well, uh, to share the, the economic prosperity. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. When, when talking uh, the issues, about issues, you may say something just for the purpose to have the Paul Batelli people see, say, ah, I would have better opinion if I have a set of a Paul Batelli on. Yeah, that's, like that, right. All right? that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, back to the discussion. We see that not only China needs southern american countries but the united states need them too because both of them need to find an extra market to lay down to 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 dispatch their surplus products right for better revenue okay now the rest of the world rest of the world other folks in other countries how do they need the move like China and the United States, kind of like join hands in the collaboration? I mean, uh, they kind of uh, opening what they call a common market. Okay, how the rest of the folks will would, would like that? Please. Well, uh I would like to think that in many respects, the United States and South America have enjoyed a good relationship. My travels to South America, again, as recent as this year. Mm -hmm. Brazil, uh, you went, right? Uh, I was greeted warmly as an American. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think that what South American countries need is economic prosperity where a larger number of their people can mm -hmm. enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it's my view that the rising tide lifts all boats. So, all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, as more countries enjoy economic prosperity, mm -hmm. uh, if a, a company begins to trade with China mm -hmm. and the U.S. Maybe they can afford to buy a Mercedes from Germany. Mm -hmm. So Germany now mm -hmm. enjoys some prosperity. All right, okay. Uh, yeah. And as the, as the country grows, more, mm -hmm. a company grows, mm -hmm. more of the employees can afford to buy mm -hmm. uh, higher quality goods and services. And the Germans might need more rubber to make tires. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, my view is that economic prosperity benefits everyone as the, as the tide rises. Rising tide. And we Lifts have fewer people. And we have fewer people that have to depend on uh, illegal trade such as the drug trade. Mm -hmm. And once we have uh, m more opportunities for trade, uh, then I think people enjoy that and have less interest in, uh, in the debate. I found it fascinating mm -hmm. that Colombia very recently mm -hmm. voted not to embrace uh, the uniting of the rebel 
with the government cause. Mm -hmm. uh, almost after decades of fighting, acknowledging that maybe they should continue to argue, which I found it very surprising. Mm -hmm. Colombia, again, is another beautiful country, mm -hmm. tremendous natural resources, some of the best coffee in the world and great things, but they also have an illegal drug trade, but they have an unstable government with the uh, uh, strength of the rebels, and they had a vote to ratify an agreement between the long-standing argument mm -hmm. that the people didn't vote for. Very interesting to me why you would not vote for peace. Mm -hmm. I would certainly advocate mm -hmm. uh, peaceful prosperity as everyone's and interest. that automatically leads the uh, discussion from uh, economical point of view to political point of view, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Politically speaking, if you have enough money, you must ask for something more. How about my right, right? How about my vote, something like that. Do you think that was something, like you said, we leave it to the rising tide that will lift all boats, including the political boat? Well, it's a very interesting and insightful question. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer is, I'm going to remain optimistically hopeful mm -hmm. that the economic tide uh, will, will take uh, and help everyone. Sure. I think in mm -hmm. our country, uh, we are, uh, regardless of your view of how good or not good uh, President Obama has done, mm -hmm. I think few would argue that he was a very politically oriented president. Politically okay. right. Well, he was a politically oriented person. Mm -hmm. His background as an attorney and, and involvement with the, the projects in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, he came from a political orientation. Now we have elected, good, bad, to be seen, a businessman, not a politician. Okay. A business person. Quite a change. Business people tend to be much more pragmatic, mm -hmm. much more focused on an end result All right. okay. than worrying about the process. And I think that a lot of the political commentators around the world, mm -hmm. a lot of the politicians in the U.S. are sitting here frightened because it's not predictable mm -hmm. how this non-politician mm -hmm. handling things like a business is going to go forward. Okay. Uh, again, my view is I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that having a pragmatist uh -huh. and a business-oriented approach uh, will be the right move. What you are saying now probably depicts exact conflicts, exactly trepidation about uh, us Americans now. On one hand, we are tired of the past eight years of being politically right. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, we're so worried about a man kind of like uh, wet behind the ears in the political mm -hmm. arena to exercise his right yeah. as, the, as the supreme commander of the United States, yeah. right? Okay, yep, one thing for sure, I don't give uh, too much to the fact that uh, if the president himself knows, a, knows too much, knows a lot, because given the condition, if you are a evil-minded person or not, if not, you have your consultant, consultant, groups, mm -hmm. if not army, if not troops, are surrounding you, right, to prevent you making mistakes, right, other than if you are an elder Hitler kind of person, so we're okay, I would say, right. And the same thing happens with President Obama, that because he has lots of consultants, consulting group, so I am too, like you, 
optimistic to what we see now. But the thing that will make a change is that to Donald Trump, a dollar is a dollar. A dollar has four quarters. That's it. Four quarters make a dollar. And to President Obama, it might not be that case. And there is always the third bathroom, something like that, right? So that is the part I, I could hardly agree with. So things might be different, might be different, right? Oh, I, I, I think without any question, mm -hmm. it'll be different. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it'll take considerable time okay. uh, before we can assess whether that's good or not. Uh, I, I think time will tell. But uh -huh. if you look at the, the first week, mm -hmm. the first piece of really wonderful news that I heard mm -hmm. was that the president-elect has said to all the lobbyists, mm -hmm. you can't serve. Yeah. You're right. No lobbyists. Go away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and... Mm -hmm. For those that do serve, mm -hmm. you have five years that you yep. cannot be allowed. Five year ban. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I like that attitude going in. Mm -hmm. I like that attitude. And also, I want to point out that uh, he has some kind of uh, rooted, uh, deeply rooted uh, measure to prevent corruption from happening, is because that. He did not use anybody's money, so no reciprocation we're talking about. So that's why he is hiring 4,000 employees mm -hmm. to the public, from the public. Yeah. Uh, if you feel you, quali you qualify, you can apply. I too. Everybody can. Something like that. So, Well, look what he's done, Jack. Mm -hmm. People that were very vocal mm -hmm. against him. Mm -hmm over the past year, uh, he is now bringing in to have discussions with. You are right, you are right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a, a famous quote. Romney. For example. Yeah, for example. Yeah. Uh, what's the old famous quote about uh, you keep your friends close mm -hmm. and you keep your enemies closer? Uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, He's bringing in and looking and communicating with a broad group of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, business people know that they cannot do everything. Mm -hmm. They must have a team and they must bring in a team mm -hmm. of very qualified people mm -hmm. for each of these positions. And I'm hopeful that uh, through this vetting process mm -hmm. that he will choose people, the right people for the right job, mm -hmm. as opposed to just being my friend. Mm -hmm. And the fact uh, that he's yeah. bringing in adversaries sure, sure, sure. or people mm -hmm. that spoke against mm -hmm. him speaks highly of things to me. Honestly, so I'm very in the pleased. very beginning, I was uh, a, uh, uh, not in, uh, in a position of liking him a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, later, well, I kind of like... Uh, said goodbye to, to the extreme left and stayed in the middle of the road. And now when I started watching him with a 100 day plan, I kind of telling myself, probably this guy will do something. Or well, let's, let's hope so, right? Okay, my dear audience, today with my good friend, Drexel Smith, well, even though I lost my voice due to the fever, cold, bad cold, I still enjoy very much talking about the politics of uh, American North and South America politics. Right. So uh, stay with us. We'll be right back, please.
Hello, my dear audiences. Welcome back to the East West Show, exclusively sponsored by Paul Battelli. An Italian men's suit and with tradition, lots of years of tradition. And uh, with an, of course, with uh, nowadays nanotech technology and, of course, design, workmanship, everything, number one. So, Paul, for uh, thank you for sponsoring. Back to the show with my friend Drexel Smith, a uh, political commentator. And uh, we're sharing his uh, takes about the present visit by Xi Jinping to uh, Latin American countries and uh, by the fact that Donald Trump has made uh, Southern American countries the target for future market, market and that by, by, by coincidence might call for a collaboration and I believe next move when Donald Trump gets to office and President Xi Jinping could make his first official visit, right? To shake hands with a brand new guy. How do you hope that to happen? Uh, Jack, I repeat what I've said mm -hmm. many times. I remain hopeful. Very. Mm -hmm. Very hopeful mm -hmm. that the United States and China can enjoy a good, respectful relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that that will continue. There's one thing I would like to check with you. Remember last year, the normalization of relationship between the United States and Cuba mm -hmm. caused a lot of a controversy. Mm -hmm. And at that very time, where did Donald Trump stand? Well, um, do you recall? I, I, I can't speak for him, mm -hmm. but I have heard that he and some of his advisors uh, were not pleased with that move. Mm -hmm. That uh, that that may be revisited. I see. I hope not. I I, I think. Mm -hmm. Going for 50 years without communicating mm -hmm. with somebody you can get to in a rowboat <laughs> okay, uh, uh, it's never probably made... A, probably it, a canoe. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 you can do that. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you don't solve problems mm -hmm. by simply not communicating and treating it like it doesn't exist. Shut yourself up, yeah. Uh, the people in, commu uh, in Cuba have uh, not prospered in the mm -hmm. past 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I am hopeful that uh, as the Castros continue mm -hmm. to age mm -hmm. and move on, that uh, uh, there will be a continuing change in attitude. Mm -hmm. And again, I trust that President Trump will recognize that in the past year, many U.S. companies are beginning to make investments in Cuba mm. uh, that he doesn't want to put at risk. So okay. I'm hopeful uh, that we'll stay on a track mm -hmm. of continuing to build a better relationship. Can now, you, let yeah, me finish. Mm -hmm. Do I understand, do I understand that during the 1950s mm -hmm. and early 60s that when Castro took over Cuba, mm -hmm. it was ugly. Mm -hmm. And many, many people suffered. Many families suffered. Mm -hmm. And there is continued hate, distrust, unhappiness. Mm -hmm. I respect their point of view. I respect it's hard for them for all of a sudden our government to shift gears and say, we're gonna be friendly. Mm -hmm. um, at some point you just can't go through life continuing to hate people. Of course, of course, yeah. And there is nothing that can go forever. Berlin walls, oh. how strong that world is, right? Yeah. And you get climbed, you get shot. Well, and uh, Jack, legally. I make the same comment. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, uh, my father fought in World War II mm -hmm. in Europe and was in very involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were friends with the Russians. You know, I don't have any problems with the Russians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I right. have a problem with any ideology that thinks that they should just take over mm -hmm. and incarcerate other people to mm -hmm, their way of thinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's a problem. But for President Trump to make comments of a willingness to have a communication mm -hmm. with the Russian leadership I think is a positive thing. All right. I think it's positive mm -hmm. to communicate. Mm -hmm. Let somebody prove that they're not worthy to be my There's friend. There's nothing that go forever. There's nothing absolutely right or absolutely wrong. Yeah. Now there, there could be a situation you're talking about. It could mm -hmm. be a situation mm -hmm. where people's behavior prove that uh, good, 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 good. Th that I can't get along with That's them. That's very but, good. Mm -hmm. But let that play out. Let that yeah. play out. Yeah, given the fact if you uh, follow Donald Trump footsteps for the year and a half, right? You see himself a kind of a fine tuning himself mm -hmm. bit by bit, right? bit by bit. What he said, no, by then, now probably yes. Who knows? Well, he never said he would create a dialogue with Russia a year ago. Now he does, yeah. right? So it could be. I well, would say, if he is smart enough, he would not, he would follow the train, rather than create another battlefield for himself. Yeah, he's got a handful already. Yeah, we himself. don't we don't need another. We don't need another one, right? No. Very good. Okay. Uh, how about the other? I mean, area of the world, for example, year round. Right. Uh, they, they, okay. So taking take the uh, Middle East, the whole pot. Mm -hmm. Right. So, how do you see the uh, the the problem be elevated in that pot, or 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 understandings could be made, or uh, attentions could be stretched by that move, I mean, Latin America move? Well, given the oil, given the oil. Da, 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 I mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess I think the, the issues with Latin America mm -hmm. uh, are economic trade oriented mm -hmm. and natural resources oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, the protection of the uh, uh, tremendous natural resources along the Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, those issues, I think, uh, are very, very different mm -hmm. than the Middle East issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the past eight years under President Obama, we have had a president mm -hmm. And during uh, Secretary Clinton's time, mm -hmm. uh, certainly a Secretary of State, that embraced this notion that we are not against any Muslim, uh, Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. uh, we want to be friendly with everybody. Mm -hmm. There's this battle cry that President Obama never referred to them as radical Islamic. Whatever okay. It's called, uh -huh. And after eight years of that attitude mm -hmm. of can't we all get along, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we now have someone that's been very vocal that says, no, we have a problem. The world has a problem. The mm -hmm. world has a problem with terrorist activity. We have witnessed terrorist acts for 25, 30 years that have all been mm -hmm. perpetrated by a particular group. 
every one from the Pan Am airline uh, that went down 30 years ago mm -hmm. uh, to the bombings in Europe uh, to the World Trade Center issue in this country. Mm -hmm. All of these radical activities, terrorist activities, and terrorist is a horrible thing because it just frightens people, mm -hmm. have all been committed by a particular group. Mm -hmm. And I think what the incoming president is saying, let's begin to recognize that it's a problem. Let's okay. begin to call it what it is. Mm -hmm. And now we need to get a plan to deal with it. Of course. It's a it very is. different approach. Sure, sure, of course. Of course, it's a high time that we did something in that whole concept, right? And, uh, well, probably that calls for another segment. We want to take a short break and we'll be right back on this piece. Hello, dear folks. Welcome back to the show. I'm sorry I lost my voice. Do I sound a little better than I started? Well, anyway, uh, I get better. I feel better because uh, when I go into depth with uh, my friend, the Drexel Smith, on this many issues, I feel more confident and I started feeling physically better. All right now. And thank you, doctor. <laughs> All right. Uh, my dear audience, welcome. Would you welcome. like some yeah, medicine? Sure, yeah, yeah, sure. My dear audience, welcome back to the exclusively sponsored by uh, Paul Batanley show, uh, the uh, East West show. Uh, Paul Batanley is uh, the, oh, by the way, this is the sample, right? I'm wearing. And he says that he needs one. Well, I said, well, you probably want to let the Paul Batanley people know that you need one, right? Okay. Very true. I'm only hopeful. Uh, you're only hopeful. They'll, you're they'll have a suit. Optimistic. They'll have a suit in my size. Okay, okay. very good. Yeah, you are not oversized, right? You, you, yeah, yeah. you're okay. Yeah. Now, uh, we at the last uh, segment mm. uh, towards the end just made a very uh, serious point. The point is that the indefinition of the world of problems to be more precisely, the problem that we're having, there are two different ways to, to take the Obama way or the Donald Trump way, right? Which, to your taste, that might work. Or they both are wrong, or, the, or they both are right. Well, Remember, I'm asking for definition. I understand. Mm -hmm. I, well, I think I do. Okay. Uh, let me begin with one of the single most important freedoms in our country mm -hmm. is the freedom of people to choose a religion mm -hmm. or choose to not have a religion. Mm -hmm. Believe, not to believe. It yeah. is absolutely fundamental. Mm -hmm. And I cringe mm -hmm. with the idea of people living in a country where they're forced into a religion that they may not choose or they're not given a choice. I just think it is so fundamental to people's being and what they want to believe uh, in, in the hereafter or whatever pieces of the religion make sense. So from that point, I want to be brutally clear. I have many, many friends in this country 
that are of the Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. Me too. I have no issue yeah. with people mm -hmm. of any faith. Of course. Mm -hmm. What I have an issue with is any faith, mm -hmm. and by the way, any political persuasion, mm -hmm. that thinks that they want to take over by force. I don't support that. I don't support mm -hmm. the radical element. Have we been doing that? Well, I'm of the opinion, now this is a Drexel Smith opinion. Okay. That President Obama trying to reach out and embrace the Muslim world so strong mm -hmm. and an absolute refusal mm -hmm. to make reference to the radical Muslim element as being a true enemy of our country. He has demonstrated in their view a sign of weakness. And I think it's important that many people see strength and weakness as, as much more important than maybe I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at a person as they stand, but I think not to appear strong Excuse me for is interruption. A Excuse me for interruption. If we stretch a little bit to go beyond Obama time yeah. to George Bush. Yes. All right. So <clears throat> how did we do back then? Well, uh, I think the jury is still out. History is still being written mm -hmm. as to uh, President Bush's initiatives in Iraq made any sense. Mm -hmm. Here we had a dictator uh, that was mm -hmm. a bad guy, mm -hmm. but he was a dictator mm -hmm. and he held the country together. No, 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 no. First, he had lots of uh, massive destruction weapons. That was the first excuse. Well, and the world thought that they did. It wasn't mm -hmm. just the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, the world intelligence agencies thought so. Mm -hmm. I still suspect those weapons just made their way to another country. I don't know, okay. never existed. I, even I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. Mm -hmm. I, I think that Saddam Hussein had no trouble using gas uh -huh. in his fights with Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I think the point is, I put myself in the category mm. of having very limited understanding of the Middle East mm. and all of the different factions. And it's, it's in some respects almost a mystery mm -hmm. that Muhammad created a religion and then all of a sudden it became fractionated and now we have the Shiite group, and we have the Kurd group, and we have all of these different groups that after centuries can't get along. Do you think or do get you not think some of the groups are man-made? Well, okay, they're, now, they're, they're all man-made. Probably, probably, I have to plead fifth. My on, friend, on they're the, all... <laughs> on, on, the, on the following All statement. religions are man-made. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, probably on this point, I have to plead my fifth for the next statement I'm going to make. Right. It is totally my personal opinion from Jack Chow. Nothing from, nothing represents mm -hmm. the organization, nor does it do to the show itself. So, okay, now, we have all kinds of religions, each religion, okay, you can't give me even one example. Are you talking about within uh, Islam? Of course, I know. I'm talking about on the global earth. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There had been all kinds of religions. Yes. And you can't give me even one single example that certain religion had no wars, had no troubles of their own uh, conflicts, right? Of no uh, radicalizations <laughs> of themselves. Right? Now, it is only your take to make enemies with them or not make enemies with them. Well, am I right? 
If you make your first move in the first place, you made yourself enemy to a certain group. You got to bear the consequences. I, I, okay, but Jack, you need to you need to roll the clock back a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. You need to roll the clock back to when Pope Urban, almost 800 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, went to uh, Paris and London and said, Islam is moving north. They're going to take over Europe. Mm -hmm. We need to stop them. And pleaded with them with mm -hmm. a famous letter mm -hmm. and famous speeches that started the Crusades. Yeah. Okay? Of course. So now you roll the clock forward and you have one of the world's most prosperous empires mm -hmm. called the Ottoman Empire. Okay? Mm -hmm. And Islam prospered, but they prospered within an environment where they had very defined. You're right very defined rules of behavior mm -hmm. where they could coexist. Mm -hmm. But even then they had conflicts. Mm -hmm. So at the end of War One, mm -hmm. okay, a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. some very smart people, mm -hmm. one of which was Sir Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. was part of breaking up the Ottoman Empire mm -hmm. and they began to draw maps yeah, make and new say, world orders. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, this will become Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Okay, this will become not Persia. Which never worked. Only end up making more trouble. Exactly, because, mm -hmm. Jack, we didn't take the time. All right, thank you. You were hitting the take nail the time on the head. That's exactly to, why I uh, asked. To understand... Mm -hmm the differences of the tribes, the political, yes. and the religious structures mm -hmm. that set the stage for the continuous conflict. Let me ask you one question. Early 70s of the last century to the uh, late 70s or something near, mm -hmm. uh, near about there mm -hmm. in that area, the Bin Laden family and the Bush family were friends. Do you know mm -hmm. that? Yes. You know that, right? Yes. Very close friends. Yes. Okay. I have no problem to be friend with anybody, provided you do not kill me, you do not invade me, right? And from that point on, why all of a sudden something pops up, right? So, do you think we America, we Americans, have have some homework to do? Have some serious oh, consideration to do? Absolutely, absolutely Jack. Absolutely, right? Okay, I think now, the entire world. Now, we want to give the job to Donald Trump. That, do you think he himself or his, his advisory group mm -hmm. would be smart, smart enough to come him down, say, hey, come down, Mr. President? We got some homework that we missed for, we ignored mm -hmm. for so, so, so long. Well, at least a century. Since, since Bush 41. Well, my, okay. my answer to you is... At least. My answer to you, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm going to remain hopeful. Oh, yeah, I know. You're hopeful. Mr. Because, hopeful. Because... Yeah. yeah, Mr. Hopeful. Mm -hmm. Because I see, disregarding all the other stuff, all the other talk, mm -hmm. Bush, uh, our, our incoming President Trump mm -hmm. is a businessman and a very All pragmatic right. one. All right. mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful mm -hmm. that he's going to take a business-like approach. Mm -hmm. And as we used to say, we peel the onion. Layer by layer. Layer by layer. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be fundamental in this issue that has over a hundred years mm -hmm. created a very radical element mm -hmm. that would find it more important to die mm -hmm. 
for their cause. If you want to say one religion. If you religion, want to get down to the fundamentals, yeah, we need uh, to. If you want to say one religion more outrights the, the other, you better restudy the history of crusade. Right? What is the result of what? Something like that. Okay, now, we can say, what we can say now is that uh, if you look at the uh, moment, probably this just the moment, changing hands, such a big nation changing hands, yeah. and the second big nation comes approach to your neighbor, which is the South, that might be your interest too, and you may get a chance together, work like a businessman, do business like a businessman do, mm -hmm. something like that. That's, that's why and where you and I both feel optimistic about. But the challenges in the Middle East uh, go deep, they go for centuries. And we they may go set them people. examples, right? By following the trend, we get better. Mm -hmm. And why do you not follow? Something like well, that. And, and uh, uh, remember, my friend, that mm -hmm. uh, Iran and mm -hmm. their leadership have declared that miles away over here in Israel, there's a whole country that shouldn't exist. And, and it just think, adds to the fire of all of this. Yeah, you upset. are right. Do you think, sir, the independence, I mean the dependence, the dependence of oils just get the area spoiled? Well, you're coming back to Even my favorite more. topic. Right, right. Of right, energy right. independence. Energy, right? That's right. So That's right. people, the world's dependence on the oil yeah. from that area we call the trouble pot yeah. has a grievant yeah. the problem made it even worse and worse day by the day. Yeah, because they have now too much that, money. They shift the focus <laughs> to yeah. Latin America. They have lots and lots of oil. Lots of crude, right? So that somehow will will reduce the spoil ship. So well, I would not would have to spoil them to that point. I'm I am hopeful, Jack, that uh, we're going to become an energy independent country mm -hmm. because we've evolved other technologies and right. to simply lessen yeah, our right. dependence. Your expertise, uh, yes, yes, yeah, yes, but. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna end with. I'm hopeful. Okay, very good. Now you're hopeful. I'm hopeful. Like say the old film, what it called? You're okay. I'm okay. Right? Like that kind. Right. Well, let me uh, make a recommendation or suggest that China buys uh, the uh, uh, Southern American oil, however refined. Who does refinery? United States. Let's go build up some uh, refineries in Latin American countries that refines the, the oil that China needs, United States needs, all right? So that benefits everybody, all right? Uh, you're hopeful, I'm hopeful. With my good friend, Drexel Smith, we went way, way, way over time. I believe my editor might have a hard time cutting off because everything is important. I don't care, let him do the job. Let his cup of tea, <laughs> all right? My dear audience, thank you for watching. Hello, my dear audiences. Welcome to the East West Show, exclusively sponsored by Paul Battelli, an Italian men's suit that represents class, tradition, workmanship, material, everything, lifestyle altogether. So, Paul, thank you for sponsoring. Back to the show. Today we are talking about, the whole world is talking about, last night is full of the scream of our TV system that uh, President of China, Mr. Xi Jinping, visits uh, Latin American countries. 
And in the meantime, we here in the United States are anticipating the 100-day plan made by uh, President-elect Donald Trump to see how it, how can that be implemented. In to echo with the move that President Xi Jinping of China is making, to echo with the need of the world. So that's why we want to name the show today, What Does Our World Need? Uh, joining me, my good friend, uh, Drexel Smith. He is not only a friend, he is the uh, uh, backbone of uh, the community, my reliable resource of, uh, source of uh, information, and my consultant. So, Smith, welcome to the show. Jack, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I lost my voice because I was running a little too high, right? And uh, a fever and uh, bad cold. I know that I'm uh, unfortunately caught, but I'm so happy to have Drexel here. At least, if you're talking about the transmit, I can do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were uh, only a day away from a major celebration mm -hmm. in our country, uniquely American, Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the day of Thanksgiving. Yes, you are right. Uh, where we take a break, uh, we pause uh, with family and friends mm -hmm. uh, as a nation to, to give thanks for the world of plenty that we have. And uh, most of us in this country have plenty. And many of us with a gathering yeah, right. waistline right. have more than plenty. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a way to put it. Uh, I really adore that. Uh, I'm so proud of, uh, of being a, an American who is so, uh, I mean, serious on being thankful, being thankful rather than complaining. I would say, regardless of your religion or whatsoever, if you have a mind full of uh, thankfulness, you are a better man, you're a better woman, I can guarantee. If you start a day complaining, and you will end up with more trouble. If you start a day with appreciation, at the end of the day, that, that very day, you end up a happy man or happy woman. So let's do... But uh, I think more than that, it's important we have a day that we simply celebrate eating too much. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the only thing that I'm not very happy is that we have to celebrate it by killing lots of birds. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. yes. I'm sorry for the birds. <laughs> yeah, someday, somehow, I wish that the birds can be, uh, can be replaced by something else. You right. prefer fish? Or, oh, no, 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 no. Something, uh, yeah. well, rather than live animals. Ah. All right. Okay. Now, back to the issue. We, know, we now hear that Trump is ready to go. We now hear that uh, China is ready to go. So how do you see these occurrences at this particular interesting point of time? Um. I find it uh, interesting mm -hmm. uh, to the point of fascinating mm -hmm. that uh, China at the top leadership uh, is taking such a great interest in what we call South America. Okay. Uh, uh, my personal point of view is that the southern part of the Americas uh, from what we call Central America, or below Mexico down, mm -hmm. uh, is many wonderful countries, mm -hmm. but somehow in the past 150 years has not enjoyed economic prosperity mm -hmm. that affects everyone to a large extent. 
Okay. Uh, there's still too many classes of people that have or have not. Uh, earlier in the year, I was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And Brazil is a wonderful and beautiful country okay. uh, with some of the world's greatest resources. Mm -hmm. But the poverty in Brazil takes your breath away. At the same time, the richness. Now, you go back in the 1800s when rubber was being mined from the Amazon. Mm -hmm. There was so much money and the ships were so frequent that the people in Manus on the Amazon sent their laundry to Paris. Huh. <laughs> All right, that's a like zero style. But today, they do not have a robust economy. Mm -hmm. And I think for China to reach out uh, to Peru and Chile uh, and other South American countries, mm -hmm. I hope can only mean eventual prosperity to live the economic ability for everyone higher. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a big prop part of the problem that we have in this country with so many undocumented immigrants coming from the South, mm -hmm. uh, we blame Mexico, but they're really not coming from Mexico. Okay. They're coming okay. from impoverished countries much yes, further yes, south, yes. Mm -hmm. and they want a better life. And I'm hopeful that if they can have a better life in their own country, mm -hmm. uh, that we will all enjoy more prosperity. Good point. Very good point. Very good point. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, to me, I would say that if things are happening in Africa, for example, or South Africa, well, we might have an excuse because they are too far away. Things are happening South America. They are too close to us to not get, give us an excuse of, of not doing anything, right? Now that China makes a move trying to improve that area, I would say I would bet Donald Trump would not just take it easy and he will say, hey, uh, I can do something too. The United States do something. Do you think there will be a positive competition rather than negative competition? Well, Please. Jack, you've heard me repeatedly say on your show, mm -hmm. I am optimistic you are. for an ongoing positive mm -hmm. relationship uh, between China and the US. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that. I believe we should be together. I believe that we should do things for the common good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that in many ways, we're more together than apart, uh, and that should continue. Okay. Uh, that's my hope, that's my pray, mm -hmm. and that's uh, what I believe. Uh, with reference to uh, China's involvement in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, China's made a tremendous investment in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think that in many places where China has made a major influence, uh, I think it's been a very positive influence. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I am yeah, hopeful yeah. Mm -hmm. that establishing mm -hmm. um, a trade relationship uh, with the Southern Americas uh, will be equally beneficial mm -hmm. and productive. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. But I think Donald Trump, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Donald, uh, President-elect Trump and I are not communicating. Uh, he hasn't called me. Mm, no, yeah, he will. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't uh, had a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm of the opinion that his plate is very full with mm -hmm. how he wants to plan the transition. Mm -hmm. Because I think that there will be some very fundamental structural differences mm -hmm. uh, in the new president's administration uh, interest and focused in pursuits mm -hmm. as opposed to what we've seen from President Obama mm -hmm. in the past eight years. Okay. On one hand, we see that uh, it is the countries that in South America, called Latin America, mm -hmm. using the Chinese term, mm -hmm. what they call, need China, need the United States 
to help them boost up the economy. On the other hand, if you look at uh, China and the United States, they need that area, those countries too, right? How do you take about that? Well, I, I, I think that uh, uh, too much of China's production of goods has been focused back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I think for China to continue an economic growth curve, uh, they need to look at other countries uh, right. okay. uh, as a source uh, for the purchasing of their goods, mm -hmm. goods and services. Uh -huh. um, you know, back uh, in the formation of the Republican uh, Party and the formation of the idea that our country needed to change uh, goes back to the 1850s. Uh, we're talking 160 years ago, Jack, mm -hmm. that uh, a, a book about free man, free property was in part not a political mm -hmm. statement, it was an economic Economical. statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. That to free man, mm -hmm. because that time we still had slavery, mm -hmm. to allow people to be free and have prosperity to work, allowed them to buy goods, have services, and enjoy things mm. would increase economic prosperity. Uh -huh. So take that to some of the countries that are right on the edge, okay? Uh, Chile, Peru, uh, Brazil, uh, and the other major countries that we call Latin America, they have tremendous economic or uh, natural resources. Mm. Potentials have, are huge. And mm -hmm. if we can see a little bit of economic prosperity, mm -hmm. they become an enormous market for goods and services All from right. China. Very good. Mm -hmm. So that well, would be the connection sure. that I would Thank you see. for the analysis, sir. And uh, today, my dear audience, with my good friend, the Jackson Smith, we're still, we're trying to see the significance of uh, the present visit uh, by uh, China side and also Trump, a 100-day plan. In his plan, there is also an approach to other countries, to Latin American countries, <laughs> see if we find ourselves in the market. Right? So if both, kind of a by coincidence, come together, could be a calibration, I don't know. So that's why we're discussing about it. So my dear audience, let's take a very short moment out. We will be right back, please.